So you just purchased your first Razer device. You get home, you unbox it, you plug it in, and then you go to install the software. And then you realize, wait a second, the software that I need to set up the RGB lighting and also the key bindings for the buttons on the sides of the mouse are not actually available for Mac OS. But don't freak out just yet. With a little help from third-party software that we'll go over throughout the course of this video, you will be able to set up your RGB lighting on your mouse and also customize all of the buttons to their full potential, all within your Mac OS. So follow along with this video and let's get your keyboard, your mouse, and even your Razer Kitty headset working to their full potential on your Mac OS device. The first step in this process is installing a program called Razer Mac OS. This program is going to be the main program that you use to customize all of the RGB lighting effects for your devices. Let's hop on over to the iMac and walk through the installation process. I have created a fresh Mac OS login so we can walk through the installation process together. All of the links I'm using from this point on will be in the description in the order in which they are mentioned. The first thing that we're going to do is go to the GitHub of the Razer Mac OS software as it is currently not in the App Store. When we first visit the link, we're greeted with a little bit of information about how the program is used and a list of compatible devices. I highly recommend reviewing the device support list before purchasing your Razer devices, especially considering Razer is not officially supported on macOS. Under the download section, we can click on latest release to download the file. It'll take us to a secondary page where we can scroll down a little bit under release information and under the assets tab, we can download the latest DMG file. Open up the DMG file and follow the usual Mac installation process by dragging the icon into the Applications folder and opening it up via Finder. You will get a security pop-up letting you know that the Razer Mac OS was downloaded from the internet. Go ahead and click Open anyway. You should see Razer Mac OS icon in your menu bar. Go ahead and connect your Razer device at this point and click on the icon. You should now be able to see your device within Razer Mac OS. Here, you will be able to set the RGB lighting effects. You can also set the polling rate and DPI of the mouse within the settings. The best part is that if you disconnect your device for any reason, such as your headset when it's not in use, the RGB lighting will be saved to the onboard memory of the device, so you do not have to set it every time you reconnect it. One thing that did stump me about how to set the custom color at first, you actually have to click into your device that you want to set a custom color for, Choose your color in the little color picker here, save custom color, go back into your drop down under static and click on custom color. And just like that, you are able to see your Razer Viper Ultimate's battery level. You're able to change the RGB and utilize those super radical RGB lighting effects that Razer is so known for, and you can also change the DPI and polling rate of your mouse, all within this Razer Mac OS software. So now that you've got your RGB lighting set up and ready to go, we're still not finished yet. We still need to go in and do the most important aspect of setting up your new mouse and keyboard, making sure all these clicky buttons work. Luckily, third-party software does exist that allows you to fully customize your Razer mouse, keyboard, and virtually any other mouse and keyboard that doesn't have native macOS support. So for this tutorial, we will be using a program called Better Touch Tools. It is the only program that I have found personally that fully detects Razer hardware. If you're unfamiliar with what Better Touch Tools is, it's a feature-packed program that allows you to fully customize your various input devices given that it is supported by the software itself. To be fully transparent, Better Touch Tools is a paid software. It's currently $21 for a lifetime license or $9 for a two-year license. You still are able to use the program after the two years. However, you won't have any product support or any updates after that time. Whichever license you pick, I'm sure is gonna be a great value. I I do prefer this program over other free software such as Carabiner Elements, mostly because I have found Carabiner Elements to be quite buggy and not fully supportive of Razer devices. So having said all of that, let's jump on over to the iMac and get all of our devices up and running. Much like our installation of Razer macOS, we'll head over to the Better Touch Tools website. 
We can see here that Better Touch Tools allows us to either buy a license or download a 45 day trial. I highly recommend downloading the trial to ensure the software works well with your devices and your current Mac OS. We'll go ahead and click to open the software. The same security prompt as before will open up. Go ahead and click on open again. The software will let you know that it can move itself to the application folder. Go ahead and click move. You will be prompted with a security and privacy pop-up letting you know that the Better Touch Tool wants access to the control finder. This is what allows Better Touch Tool to create and utilize macros for your devices. Click OK. After this, you'll be greeted with a data privacy pop-up. Go ahead and click continue. From here, you can click on start using BTT and open preferences. During this installation, the security prompts did not come up for me. Presumably, it's because I installed Better Touch Tools on another user in the past. When you first open up Better Touch Tools, it'll probably look something like this. In order for us to set up different keys for the mouse specifically, you need to click on the drop down button on the top and go down to normal mouse. From here, you can click on the plus icon to add your first shortcut. On the right hand side, you'll see a box that says please select a trigger. What you'll do here is hover over this box with your mouse pointer and select the button on your mouse you'd like to macro. In my case, I'm going to click the scroll wheel button. You can see that this populated with the middle mouse button, which is the button I clicked. You can go ahead and click on the blank space and this is going to open up another window that says assign first action to select a trigger. Go ahead and click on the plus icon and this will bring up a box here of all of the options that you have to select with this middle mouse button will do. I usually like going into the Mac OS functionality tab and uh, selecting what I like from here. Personally, I like the middle mouse button to be assigned to the mission control, so that's what I'll do here. Now that we have our middle mouse button set up to be the mission control, you can go ahead and test it out. It should be pretty immediate. I'll go ahead and open up a few windows here just so we can uh, test out the functionality. And there we go, it's as easy as that. You can repeat this process for the rest of the buttons on your mouse as many times as you want for as many <laughs> buttons as you have. I'll go ahead and do another example here. For this one, I'm gonna do one of my side buttons. And there you have it. We set up keybinds in minutes with our Razer Viper on our Mac and it's working flawlessly. After setting up everything to your liking, you should now have fully functional Razer devices with amazing RGB and fully functioning macro keys working on your macOS devices. If you need further assistance with Razer macOS, Better Touch Tool, or even Carabiner Elements that I mentioned as a free alternative, don't hesitate to let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to further assist. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time. Bye.